Well, I've removed the auto cooler from the vehicle. As we can all see, it's looking a bit sad and dismal and oxidized. So, let's see what kind of magic I can do on this. Right, now that I've got the thing the right shape now, now I can give it a clean. So, that's much better than it was. It's pretty haggard looking before. Alright, let's get the condenser cleaner on it. Well, that's as clean as this sad old tormented thing will get. But it's much better than it was. Well, there we go, got it sitting in place, just got to tighten it up. Got all new hoses going to it. I made little shields to go around the hose where it can rub through. Same here near the dryer. So, should work much better than it did before. And someone questioned if that's garden hose. No, it's just hose that came with this uh, expansion tank. And also someone mentioned about the pulley on this. It's actually got its own flywheel. Interesting. I think I'll be doing a radiator in this vehicle very soon. The next LTD I'm going to strip has a new radiator in it, so I might as well put it in this. Because this one, you can see all the fins are just disintegrating. It's been painted, recode, but caused pretty stuff. The heat transference of this would be pretty poor. I mean, look at that, it's all falling to pieces. Yeah. That's what you get with old cars sometimes. It's pretty nasty actually. I thought this radiator wasn't doing the best job when it was just sitting here idling. Well the horns weren't working in this. I weren't getting any power. And I was like, what's going on here? Then I actually noticed there's a little relay just flapping around down there. So I took out the expansion tank which was full of muck. And uh yeah, what a horrid job. If it's got one wire running from the positive on the battery, it seems to be unfused. All around the front of the car to this relay, which is broken off here, it just seems to be flapping around down there. And uh, yeah, none of it seems to be working. Looks like I've got a little bit of wiring to do. So, might put a fuse box somewhere for horns and uh, at least high beam or high beam inner headlights a few other bits and bobs maybe well I've got a test light connect to the main horn trigger cable we've got a new battery terminal there as well so let's push the horn that well, looks like the switch is working there's power getting there so obviously the relay setup they did has shagged itself either a bad earth to the relay or the relay stuff. Well I was right about that gas pedal being way too light. The throttle return spring had fallen off. So luckily it's still there. So I'll just put that back on and then the gas pedal should be a lot better. So it's just way too touchy before. Alright, well now it's got a throttle return spring on it. I didn't move the gas mixer to do that though because it was impossible to get to with that in the way. So, but, got a return spring there. So it shouldn't be dangerously touchy. Now that I've moved the gas mixer, you can see it might need a few hoses. You can see the hose clamp here has been way over tight and cut through the hose. I feel a bit soft and gooey anyway. And someone's put this bracket on wrong and sort of cutting into it. Should be on more of an angle. Oh, well, these things happen. Well, I pulled that damn massive battery out. It's huge for the CCA. It's only 700 CCA. But it's not the right battery for this car. You can tell, especially because they've hammered that in and even torn through the skin just to be able to fit that there. It doesn't even sit on the battery tray properly. So, but the battery's gone flat again. Like it just won't do a thing really. And run the headlights, won't turn the engine over at all. 
and it's running at about 10 volts. So I'm going to give it a proper charge and actually see if it comes good or not. So, but it's the wrong one for the car. I'm going to have to get the correct battery for this.